This is going to be called How to Get Started in the Bible. My main burden for this channel is to get people started in the Bible, to get them interested. And I want to give each listener just a genuine interest in the Bible that they never had before. Because a man can get up and teach something and make you excited, and that will keep you going a couple of days. A preacher can get up and preach hard on sin, and this will make you live right for a couple of days. But if he can get you interested in the Bible, then you can get up every morning and keep yourself excited because you're into the words. The trouble for a lot of people is that they don't know where to get started in the Bible. They pick the Bible up. It's got all these names in it. They don't know where to begin. They might be a new convert and they pick up a Bible and it's a huge book. It looks intimidating and they look at it and say, where do I even begin? The first thing I want to say is get a hold of a perfect Bible. And there is a perfect Bible out there because in Psalm 12, 6 through 8, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. And the vilest men will change the Word of God. That's their flesh, their vile flesh, and that we all have. Our vile body is going to have to be fashioned like unto His glorious body. I still have a vile body. You still have a vile body. We all still have wicked flesh, and it's the wicked flesh and the vile flesh that would ever want to change the Word of God. But there is a perfect Bible. So there is a Bible that has pure words that has been preserved even to this very day. You will find the pure words in the King James Bible. So, you need to find a King James Bible. Not a new King James, a King James. And I suggest a wide margin Bible. Preferably with a wide margin on all four sides of the page. They sell those for a decent price on the internet. The ministry bearing precious seed has a nice wide margin Bible for like $50. It has wide margins on all four sides. Very generous margins. That's how I like it. There are a lot of wide margin Bibles that don't have the wide margin in the gutter. And I mean, that just frustrates me a little bit. But I personally, this is my preference, a wide margin Bible. And if you don't have a wide margin or you don't like them, you can always go to Walmart and get a journal or a notebook. That way you can take notes on what you're reading and studying. If you can't afford a Bible, then there are places like the Dollar Tree that sell them for a dollar. A dollar Bible has the same pure words in it as the K King James, if it's a KJV. Just get one of those and a, a notebook while you're in there. You could also go to the nearest church. I mean, probably any church. It doesn't even matter, really. Surely, they'll give you a King James Bible if you ask for one. I guarantee you, a church near you would supply you with a Bible. I mean, even if they don't use the King James there, surely they could at least give you one. The next thing you need to do is get a concordance. What that is is a book that has all the words that are in the Bible listed in alphabetical order, and by each word is the reference to every time that word shows up in Scripture. And what you can do is you got your perfect Bible, you got a concordance, you got a journal, or you got the wide margin. And what you can do is each day in the morning, take five verses a day, look at the standout words in each verse, uh, look, at, uh, look those standout words up in the concordance, and write the references down in a notebook like, like a rough draft, and then transfer them over to your Bible. That way you find out what the Bible says about the Bible. And the Bible kind of interprets this self, itself this way. For example, looking up the phrase, the day of the Lord. You can look that phrase up with e-sword or something. And that is, if you have internet access, I highly recommend a program like e-sword. I have it on my phone and on my laptop and I've used this program for like 10 years now. And I've been saved about 10 years a more popular one is Sword Searcher, and this is there is also one called Bible Analyzer, and Bible Analyzer even has the Common Man's Reference Bible available for it. I don't have Bible Analyzer, but it looks great. The good thing about eSword is that you can search whole phrases throughout the Bible, not just a single word. So you could search the phrase, 
day of the Lord. And then write down, find the verse uh, that says day of the Lord and write down all the references to day of the Lord. And that will give you a good picture about what that is. So I would take at least five verses a day and cross-reference all the standout words and phrases in those verses. Write these down in your Bible or notebook. This is how the Bible will interpret itself for you. And this is how you can get your Bible filled with notes. You don't just have to be a Christian that never gets into the Bible. You can be a Christian that is a Bible student. It says in Isaiah 28, 9 through 10, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. You're going through the scriptures. You're comparing scripture with scripture. Another thing you need to do is start on the outside of the Bible and work your way in which I would probably suggest doing this before you really get deep into examining each verse. Take a book of the Bible, starting in Genesis, read through it, write down a short sentence or phrase or title for each chapter. And if you do that for each chapter and also write it down somewhere at the front of that book, you're really going to grasp what that book of the Bible is about because you're going to have a list of all the stories and events that happened in that book and i'd also suggest getting a reference bible and writing down the information like how many chapters is in the book how many verses how many words are in that book and write it down at the front of each book even the dates that it happened historically that will help you it'll help you figure out when did this happen you know did moses come before abraham or did abraham come before moses a lot of people don't understand these little simple truths and I have the overviews completed for the Old Testament on YouTube and on the website. If you go to the website, you can listen to those, and that might help you get started. I'm also working on getting a video of outlines for each book of the Old Testament as well. That way you can just go through and kind of see how I did it, and maybe you can copy how I did it. Doing this will help you see the big picture for each book. So that you're not going into the book with no idea what the book's even about. It's like people go to Numbers or First Chronicles. They're like, what is this even about? What am I reading? They don't know where they're at. They don't know who's, who it's even talking about. But this will help you approach each book of the Bible knowing what that book of the Bible is about, knowing what to look for and all these things. And if you just did one book of the Bible a week, it would just take you just a little over a year to get it done. I mean, there's just 66 books in the Bible. But the main thing is staying at it. If you stay at it, then you're going to get somewhere. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're a workman. It says in 1 Timothy 5.17, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. When it comes to starting in your Bible, you want to start making progress. Many times all a Christian gets is from church on Sunday morning and Sunday night. Many times the preacher just preaches on random things every time. He de he's not really going anywhere with it. So if the Christian just hears random things here and there, they don't really begin to make progress toward learning the Bible. They may start to love preaching. They may learn something here and there but they just know little things about the Bible here and there. So the Bible doesn't ever really get as interesting to them as it should. They never really get a grasp on the Bible. That's why they're so easily deceived and tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine that comes along. But if you start taking a book of the Bible every week and do this from Genesis to Revelation, writing a brief summary about it, cool little facts, a chapter-by-chapter -chapter outline at the beginning of that book, you're going to be making progress. You're going to find that you have you understand the Bible a lot better than you ever did before. And also, when you're, when you're reading it, that also gives you a purpose as you're reading it because you're really having to concentrate on what's this chapter about because you're going to need to write a little title or phrase about what that chapter is about so you're focusing more. It gives you that purpose to focus and not just reading it and letting your mind drift off. 
And while you're doing this, you can listen to uh, a verse-by-verse -verse book of each book of the Bible. You can do that. Uh, goodpreaching.com has tons of verse-by-verse -verse studies on any book you want. Download some Kyle Stevens or Bevins Welder or David Hoffman and go verse by verse with them in a book. Do this with the entire Bible, even. While you listen to my verse by verse studies, if you listen to those through the scriptures, you can write down the ref references and things like that. Robert Breaker and Gene Kim also have some verse by verse stuff. Go through the verses with your concordance or e-sword and then glean some stuff from these other men. You just want to be making progress towards something in your Christian life. It's like you don't just want to get up every day and, I mean, you know, you may be a good Christian person, but you're just still getting up every day and you're not making progress towards anything. You're just existing in this life. You know you're going to heaven and you're thankful for it, but don't you just want to get up every morning with a purpose of making progress towards something? You'll be a lot happier and it'll keep you out of trouble. It'll keep you out of sin. If you get up with a purpose of making progress through the scriptures. If you just jump from one place to another in the Bible with no real goal in mind, then you may learn a couple things about the Bible, and that's better than nothing. But you want to know the Bible. So starting on the outside, looking at each book and working your way in will really help you. And when, it, when, it, when you come across something that you don't understand or that is confusing, you should write it down. Consistently pray about that topic, study on it. Even ask someone who might can give you some light on it and ask more than one person. It's like it says in Proverbs eleven fourteen, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I mean, I like to have a multitude of counselors. I got several people that I'll ask, what do they think about? this verse what do they think about this topic the bible is our final authority but maybe another person can shed light on it and this is how you can fill in holes and blind spots in your thinking when it comes to the bible a lot of times you almost have the topic down in your head and then you just need that one piece and you have it a lot of times i'll be listening to a uh, a teaching or a sermon and that preacher will say something and it gave me that final piece of the puzzle and then I got it in my mind and many pastors uh, warn you or tell you to run away from commentaries and listening to other men and that's crazy because at the same time they want you to listen to them that's always been strange to me but the Lord is the one who made certain men to be teachers so that they could teach you in Ephesians 4, 10 through 12, it says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I mean, God's the one that gave you the teachers. He didn't give you all of them. Some of them are false teachers. But God wants there to be teachers. God wants there to be pastors to edify people staying at it and working on your bible every day is the key men have hobbies and they get consumed by their hobbies a lot of men play video games if they put as much time and energy in the scriptures they would be a bible genius in a year many men spend time fishing and hunting if they spend as much time in the scriptures then they would be a force to be reckoned with when it comes to defending the scriptures and being able to just tell, being ready to give an answer to every man that asketh them a reason of the hope that is in them. You want to be ready to give an answer. When a lost person asks you a question, you want to be able to answer it with the Bible. Lost people have questions. They're skeptical, skeptical of preachers, of Christianity, of Christians in general. Over the years, I have made the Bible my hobby. I think that is the best way to do it. I don't just do it because I'm commanded to. I don't just do it to stay right. I do it because it's fun. And I get enjoyment out of it more than anything else. More than any hobby I've ever had. Because the thing about the Bible is that it's real. It's the truth. And all that other stuff that was my hobbies in my life. You know, whether it was playing basketball or baseball or football or playing video games. 
all that stuff was just temporary stuff, and it might have been fun, but it was temporary. It's not going to last forever. If you make the Bible your hobby, you're making something your hobby that has eternal value. Nothing else has eternal value like that other than the Bible and the souls of men. So, I think that's the best way to do it. Make the Bible your hobby. Go out there. Get you a wide margin Bible. Go to church Bible publishers if you can afford it. Get a wide margin Bible. Get the Common Man's Reference Bible. Get the Ruckman Wide Margin Reference Bible. Or just get a nice Bible if you just don't even like wide margins and get you uh, one of those, those nice journals from Walmart and write notes in it. Get, get some of those, I, I highly recommend the Micron pens. They sell them at Hobby Lobby. You can get them on Amazon. They don't smear hardly, and they just, if you spill coffee or water on your Bible, it doesn't make it fade. It stays there. I suggest those. Get eSword. I recommend it. Get a concordance. Just start making progress in the Bible. So I hope that this has encouraged you to get started in the Bible and to get a genuine interest in the Scriptures.